In 1917, the Bolshevik Party took power after the Russian Revolution and formed a communist Soviet Union. Due to the equality principles of communism, Soviet women were offered the same opportunities as their male counterparts. During World War II, a need for Soviet pilots arose and women volunteered to fill these positions. The most decorated regiment of female pilots became known as the Night Witches. The Night Witches, a group of female pilots in the 588th Night Bomber Regiment, gained respect for women in the Soviet Union during World War II. They fought using outdated technology and against misogyny from their male peers and made many personal compromises to earn respect and rights for women in the Soviet Union. During World War I, Soviet women joined ground combat troops to aid in the attacks against the Central Powers. Russia left the war in 1917 because of the Russian Revolution, and women were given another chance to fight during World War II. On November 2, 1938, Marina Raskova received her title as Hero of the Soviet Union after completing the longest non-stop flying record of her time. Raskova then used her title to spark the Women's Pilot Movement. After Hitler launched the invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, the Soviets lost over 7,000 aircraft and experienced a shortage of combat pilots, so volunteers were called on to fly combat missions. At first, only the men were accepted, but Roskova convinced Stalin to recruit about 1,000 volunteer female pilots. These women gained their experience as pilots by joining paramilitary clubs and completing necessary military training for a period of six months before they were allowed in the air. Eventually, Roskova formed three all-female combat pilot regiments, the 586th Fighter Aviation Regiment, the 587th Dive Bomber Regiment, and the 588th Night Bomber Regiment. The 588th Regiment became the most decorated regiment out of the three. Due to the shortage of aircraft, the Night Bomber Regiment flew crop-dusting planes that were built to be used on Soviet farms. These planes were known as Polokarpov PO-2s. These women got the nickname Night Witches from the Germans who lived in fear of them. We flew in sequence, one after another, and during the night we never let them rest. And the Germans made up stories. They spread the rumor that we had been injected with some unknown chemicals that enabled us to see so clearly at night. For over six months, the Night Witches trained for 14 hours a day. They learned how to use ground weapons and reviewed standard ground procedures. The PO2 planes used were wooden, canvassed, and open cockpit planes that were designed for men, so many shorter women had trouble navigating the planes and had to make adjustments accordingly. The planes had a top speed of 100 kilometers per hour, which was less than the stall speed of the German fighter planes. They weren't equipped with parachutes until 1944 because of how low they flew compared to other planes. Because of how loud the planes were and the visible sparks seen in the engines when they flew, the women idled their engines and glided over towns in order to avoid being shot down. The planes could only fly a short distance, so they were moved during the day and makeshift runways were made in clearings close to the targets so they could take off. Once they were in the air, the women had no form of communication, and the pilot and navigator who flew together compromised by speaking through rubber tubes. Many planes could only carry two to four bombs, so each woman flew multiple missions from dusk to dawn. To avoid getting caught, they flew in pairs, with one plane flying low as the others drew the attention of the German searchlights. According to one story from Arena Rakopolskaya, bombs had a chance of getting stuck, so the navigators had to climb out onto the wings of the plane and push the bomb loose with their bare hands. The goal of all their missions was to destroy targets close to the front lines. These included fuel depots, vehicles, ammunition dumps, and enemy bases. In 1943, after just one year of flying, the 588th Night Bomber Regiment was promoted to the 46th Guards Night Bomber Regiment. In order to train and fly long missions throughout the night, the Night Witches gave up their personal health. Throughout the war, the women flew from dusk to dawn and spent their days moving from base to base. With so many wartime responsibilities, they only got about two to four hours of sleep per day. Because of the strain of their missions, the women often lost their appetite as well. Once they were over their target, the women were forced to inhale the gunpowder and smoke of the bombs they were dropping. During some missions, the pilots and navigators passed out from exhaustion and were shaken awake by the other once they were over the target. The lack of sleep became apparent to the military doctors, so the women were given pills named Coca-Cola to stay awake. While these were effective at night, in the few hours they were allowed to sleep, many women were unable to do so. Once my regiment sent me to a recreation center for medical treatment to restore my health. 
but I ran away after three days because I couldn't stay when the others were risking their lives. Eventually, the mental and physical strain put on these women became so bad that after the war, many couldn't pass the medical examinations required to become civilian pilots. Not only did they experience conflict on the front lines of World War II, but these women continually dealt with conflict from their male peers. Although communism allowed for the women to fill the same jobs as men, the idea was not welcomed. Repeatedly, they were called the Skirts Regiment by the male pilots. The night witches also flew in cockpits built for men, were given male uniforms and boots to wear, and weren't allowed to sleep in the all-male barracks. Feeling stripped of their femininity, the night witches compromised and made adjustments to the equipment they were given. Those who could sew tailored the uniforms to fit better, and they filled their boots with newspapers so they didn't fall off when they walked or ran. Their planes and helmets were decorated in feminine ways so they stood out among the planes of the male pilots. Poland and Germany. We found many pictures of beautiful flowers to use in our embroidery. My mother would send colored threads to me at the front. During their six months of training, the women slept in the schools where they trained because they weren't allowed in the barracks. Although the night witches fought and flew for many different reasons, the main factor that drove them to work harder was to disprove the misogyny that came from their male peers. After being promoted to a guards regiment in 1943, the women were used as propaganda in the Soviet newspapers. Many pilots were outraged and insisted that they were being recognized for their accomplishments, not their gender. The women flew no worse than men, and in many respects better. After all, they were not required to serve, and that which is done at the call of the heart is always done better than that which is done out of obligation. After three years of combat, only 30 pilots and navigators died out of the 400 women in the regiment. Due to their outstanding mission record, 23 women were awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union Award. The title of hero was conferred, by law, if a pilot or navigator completed more than 500 successful combat flights. Our heroes, as a rule, had more than 700 flights. They started off fighting in the Don region of the Soviet Union and continued to fight through Crimea, Belarusia, Poland, and Germany. They were crucial in the liberation of cities such as Stalingrad, Warsaw, and Berlin. Most of the night witches left the Air Force after the war to work on regaining their mental and physical health but continue to hold important jobs that they had strived for before the war. Many Germans experienced psychological effects as a result of their incessant bombing. In some cases, the night witches would fly over certain towns to keep the Germans awake and in constant fear. After the war, all the hard work the women put into gaining respect from their male peers paid off. How rarely do we recall the names of the women fighter pilots? There weren't many of them, but their combat actions deserved the very highest appraisal. They disproved the erroneous opinion that the profession of air combat is unacceptable for women. Men, such as Lavrinkov, encouraged people to learn more about Soviet female combat pilots and study about how important they were in the Soviet victory of World War II. It wasn't just the Soviets who gained respect for women, but other countries too gained a new perspective on how women are equal to men. We simply couldn't grasp the fact that the Soviet airmen that caused the greatest trouble were women. These women feared nothing. They came night after night in their very slow biplanes, and for some periods, they wouldn't give us any sleep at all. Although communism supported the idea of women having the same jobs and positions as men, it wasn't until after the night witches that the idea of women filling the same military ranks as men was fully accepted. After World War II, Soviet women were fully accepted into all positions in the military, whether it was ground combat forces or as aviation pilots. But it wasn't until 50 years later that other governments decided to follow the example set by the Soviet Union and reassess the role of women in their militaries. Countries with powerful militaries, such as the United States and France, allowed women to enter combat aviation units after the night which just set an example of how successful women could be in such positions. Just as Stalin first agreed to the idea of recruiting female pilots for the monetary gain, the Soviets did the same thing when they let women enter the space program. In the early 1960s, Khrushchev allowed for Valentina Tereshkova to enter the program, and she later became the first woman in space. She was recognized with the award Hero of the Soviet Union, and the idea of gender equality as a result of communism allowed her to enter space 19 years before any other woman. In 1968, Tereshkova became the head of the Committee of Soviet Women, a committee that fought for respect for Soviet women, and was also staffed by many former night witches. Although the night witches seemed to be forgotten history, they were crucial in the movement for gender equality around the world.